It's Thursday night. Welcome to Thor Connect with Bishop Gates. God bless you. Thank God for you. I do not plan to be before you too long tonight. It's been a long, long week for me, uh, as I'm sure it has been for you as well. Um, all right. Um, while we're uh, preparing to get started, let me encourage you and invite you, those of you who are in the Los Angeles area, to join me this Sunday at 3 o'clock sharp for Thor Live. And we hold our services at the Barbara Morrison, Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center, 4305 Degden Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles. So if you're in the area, please join us this coming Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Um, I want to give a shout out to Minister Designate Augustus, who brought a sermonette this past Sunday. She did a fine job. Very, very proud of you. Uh, let's see. Also, remember on fourth Sunday, uh, I don't have that date in front of me, but this coming fourth Sunday, we will be uh, in the park. Uh, it's our Thor Pop. It's when, that's a time we've set aside to give out food and clothing and just personal items to those who are less fortunate than we are. And so if you're in the area, uh, please join us. Um, please, fourth, please join us uh, at two o'clock. And then we go out in the park at around 2.30, 3 o'clock. All right, all right. So that's the 24th of this month. Amen. God bless you, Lakita. Good to see you. God bless you. Thank you. September 24th. Yes. Thank you very much. Renita, God bless you. How you doing? How you feeling? Uh, how's grandmother doing? How's your mom doing? Please let them know that I am praying for your family. Uh, that's my Memphis family. God bless you. Thank God for you. We are praying for you. And we're also praying for those who have family members who uh, have been affected by Hurricane Irene. Um, we are praying for Flor the Floridians. Uh, if you have family and friends there, we are praying for you, uh, praying that uh, electricity will be restored soon. That's so much going on there. So we are definitely in prayer for those who, are, who have been affected by this recent hurricane. All right, all right, Mal, Mel, God bless you. Good to see you. Makita, got Mika. Oh, God, I keep giving you a hundred gazillion names. But anyway, Mika, God bless you. Good to see you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. I'm excited. I'm getting excited. Uh, I'm getting excited about tonight. Doris, how are you? God bless you. Good to see you. And to those of you who have joined us via the conference call, God bless you. Thank God for you. Let me see if I can not cut my head off. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's better. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you say amen, if you send me some uh, some emojis and all that kind of fun stuff, we'll probably get through the um, lesson rather quickly. I plan to be out of here by midnight. How about that? All right, well, let's pray. Father, again, we just thank you for your goodness and your kindness. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for being a present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need. Thank you that you're God and you're consistent. Uh, you're uh, an on-time God, and we thank you for it right now. Now, God bless this word tonight, just words of encouragement uh, for your people. I thank you that your word will go forth with simplicity and with power. And I thank you that it will accomplish the purpose to which it was sent. We thank you for it and give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening. Glad to be in the service. I'm uh, Doris, I'm glad that you are here. I look for you every uh, nowadays, it's every Thursday, 
And again, I appreciate you all uh, making the adjustment with me. I really appreciate it very, very much. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's see. Uh, audio very low. All right. All right. Lynn, God bless you on the conference call. God bless you. Missed you all yesterday um, afternoon. It was, uh, there's some technical things I have to work out. Uh, and so uh, by next week, everything should be up and ready to go so that we can consistently have our six o'clock a.m. prayer and our 12 noon prayer as well. God bless you, Minister Smith. Lieutenant uh, McCovery, God bless you. Thank God for you. Well, let's get into this lesson. Tonight, I just want to encourage you. Tonight, I want to inspire you. Tonight, I want to provoke you. I want to move you from where you are to where you need to be. Uh, if it's no more than just one step closer uh, uh, to where you're trying to get to. If you're one step closer, then I've done my job. God bless you, Renita. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. Amen. Mom says hello. Grandmother, God bless you. All right. I, I may be kind of all over the place tonight. But hear the essence of what I want to share with you tonight because there's a lot in my spirit. There's a lot on my mind. There's a lot that I want to give you tonight. So tonight might be a smorgasbord um, of, of it, it may be a variety of things that I share with you. And what I'm certain about, Sandra, is that uh, out of the variety of things that I'm going to say tonight, I'm sure it's going to hit everybody on the call, everybody who tunes in today, tonight, tomorrow, whenever you tune in. I believe that what I say tonight will resonate in your spirit. It may not all be for you, but I believe that there is something in what I'm going to say tonight that will that will bless you. Amen. I'm the kind of preacher, if you will, uh, that likes to make you go, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. Or to make you ponder or to set you up, if you will, uh, for uh, an aha moment or an epiphany or a, mm, oh my God, I got it kind of moment. Uh, something to shake you and to rattle you, something to jar you from where you are so that you can move to where you need to go. Uh, sometimes we get stuck in a rut. Uh, uh, life becomes uh, mundane. It becomes ritualistic. It becomes systematic. It, it becomes so, um, uh, so common, so systematic until uh, we can sometimes walk through life unconsciously because we're not called on. Life will not challenge us so that we have to uh, tap into uh, our subconscious mind uh, to figure out what, what what's going on. We, we can just, we get up, we're, we're programmed, if you will, and we just get up and, and we have this routine. I think, I think that's what I've been trying to say. We have this routine and we just, we're just like a herd of, a herd of calf and cattle. We just, we just go through life uh, routinely and we don't even have to think about it. We just, we get up at the same time every morning, uh, we have the same thing for breakfast or thereabout, and we're out of the door at the same time every day, and we're in our cars, and we take the same route to and from work, school, whatever it is, and we don't even have to think about it. We we come home and grab something to eat, and nowadays with fast food restaurants everywhere, we don't even have to um, cook. We can just roll up to the window, and they'll give us our food, and so thinking and and, and, and pondering things and allowing, watch this, the Spirit of God to 
uh, illuminate uh, ideas and processes and systems and, and just new thoughts. Uh, we, we don't have those moments too often because we're programmed to live and be and do a certain thing. Um, and so I, I'm going to be, I know it, I can feel it. I'm going to be all, all over the place. I'm going to be all over the place, Sandra, but y'all pray for me. Uh, there's just a lot I want to share. Uh, one thing, um, as we are kind of coming out of the earthquake uh, series, and I hope you've been praising God this week. I hope you've been praising God this week. Ryan, God bless you, man of God. So good to see you. I hope you've been praising God this week. Let, let me just share with you uh, some of the things I've experienced since we've last um, had a time to, uh, our time together. Uh, it's been a challenge the last week. It's been a lot going on in my world. Um, and it's been hard. It's been, it's, it seems like the moment I start preaching this message, my life intensified. It seems like pressures came from everywhere. And I found myself, I'm going to be very honest, I found myself uh, heavy hearted. I found myself um, wanting to murmur and complain. I, I found myself discouraged. I found myself just thinking, you know what, this is just too much. All of these thoughts were rolling around in my head and on my mind. But guess what happened? Doris, guess what happened? Mm. I, I, I hear a scripture, I believe it is in Psalms, and it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And what happened, Doris, is that in my moment of despair and in my moment of anguish and in my moment of feeling hopeless, like it was just too much, it was too hard. I'm working on two projects and it just seems like everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. Two, two uh, construction projects and uh, trying to wrap it up and it just seems like the closer I get to finishing the projects, it seems like, oh my God, this happens and then that happens and it's like, oh my God, and it's like, oh my God. But let me tell you what happened. What happened was the word I preached out of my mouth, the instructions that I gave you played back in my ear and it challenged me to do one of two things. It challenged me to, to continue sulking and continue uh, murmuring and complaining about what was going on. That was number one. But secondly, it reminded me that praise is a weapon and a tool. And so I had a choice, whether I, I, I had a choice, I, my choice was to either continue to uh, be angry and disappointed and frustrated or to begin to worship. Ah, and I'm going to let you know, as hard and as difficult as it was, I opened my mouth and began to sing praises. And, and let me tell you, when I start singing praises, Doris, it didn't feel good. <laughs> it, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good. It didn't, it didn't feel good. It didn't make me feel any better immediately. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, it was an immediate self-gratification. It, it took a while, but I noticed as I drove throughout the city and started praising and worshiping, ah, then something on the inside of me started to change. And so I'm saying that to say, I hope you took time out this week to praise God and to magnify God and to glorify him in spite of what you may be facing, in spite of what you may be going through, in spite of yourself. I hope you were able to open your mouth. Now, listen, I want to go to, um, and, and we hit on this a couple of weeks ago, Joshua 6, the sixth chapter Verse 1 and 2, I think 3, 4, and 6. Are you ready? 
<laughs> Joshua 6 and 1, it says, Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Second verse. And the Lord, and I need you to hear me. It says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hands Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. I'm going to read it again. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Joshua, see, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Now I can, I, this is, I, I can just stay right here for the rest of the month. But one thing I want you to see, God said, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. Now this was before they took one step around uh, the city. What I'm saying is that God had already given it unto thine hand. Listen, what you believe in God for, what you're wanting God for, uh, what you are hoping for, God has already given it unto you. See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. God has already given it. Everything that you're believing God for, Ryan, everything that you're hoping for, everything that you can imagine and dream about, God has already given it to you. Now, I'm about to hurt you in just a little while. I'm about to hurt you. Are you ready? Oh, he's already given. God gives it to you before you get it. Because the moment he says that it's yours, guess what? It's yours. I'm going to read it again. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. Now watch this. God had told Joshua that I had given you the land. I have given you Jericho. But what was between what was between the children of Israel and Jericho? It was a wall. I, I could go somewhere about that wall, but I'm going to leave the wall thing alone. <laughs> but in spite of the fact that there was a wall, God said, it doesn't matter that there is a wall there. I have given you Jericho. And see, some of us allow walls and obstacles and barriers. Ah, what? Uh, uh, let me back up. What seems to be a wall, what seems to be a barrier, we allow those things to prevent us from claiming, laying hands on, uh, 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 possessing what God has given us. He said, to, he said to Joshua, I have given unto thine hand. It's, it's in your hand. In other words, it's in your power and it's in your ability. Now I'm about to go somewhere. You stick with me tonight. Lynn, God said, it's in your hand. I've given you the power. I've given you the ability to take this city along with its king and the mighty men of valor. Listen, listen, it didn't matter that within the walls um, uh, there was a king. It didn't matter because the king of kings said, I've given you the land. I can't hear nobody. Uh, it didn't matter that on the other side of the wall were mighty men of valor. It didn't matter. God said, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. Hmm. Now watch this, watch this. And he gave him instructions on how to possess the land. Are you ready? And he, and you shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus thou shalt do six days. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And seven priests shall bear for the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpet. Now listen, 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 listen. God said it's in your hand, it's in your ability. In other words, God set the stage for you to possess the land. Oh my God, Sandra, God has already set the stage for you to possess that which you want to possess, to, to lay hold to what you are believing him for. God has already set the stage. The universe has postured itself to give you what you are believing God for. He's already set the stage. The, the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Remember that old song, come over here. The table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. But listen, you've got to come over here. And I just said a whole lot. I hope you get that. But here, God is saying, the Lord is saying, I've given it to you, but these are the instructions. This is what you, listen, listen to what I'm about to say. I've given it to you, but this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it one more time. He said, he said, he said, I've given it to you. I've given it, it. I've given it into thine hand, the king and the mighty men of valor. But this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, help me. I'm trying not to go too fast. I'm trying not to go too fast. He said, I've given it to you, but this is what you've got to do. Ryan, I've given it to you, but in order for you to get it, this is what you've got to do. And see, right there is where we miss it. Yeah, God said, I've given it to you. I've put it in your hand. I've given you the power and the ability to possess it. But in order to possess it, this is what you've got to do. <laughs> Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But watch this. Here's the thing that you've got to get. I think I'm going to just go ahead and get in it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. God help me today. Let me read uh, verse five. And it shall come to pass that when they made a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat, shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straightway before him. In other words, I've given you the land. I've given it to you. I've given it to you. But this is what you've got to do. Mm. See, some of us don't like to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. Ah, you don't want to be told what to do. You, your ego gets in the way. Your ego tells you, ah, ah, who do you think you are telling me what to do? Well, hmm, God has given it, but this is what you've got to do. Ah, we don't want to do what is necessary to get what we've got to get from God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go right in there. I'm going to go right in there. And he said, uh, he said, when you hear the trumpet shout, and sometimes uh, we allow stubbornness and rebellion to keep our lips closed when we should be shouting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We allow fear to keep us from shouting. We allow the opinions of other people to keep us from shouting. But my God, if God says shout, then you ought to shout. Hmm? He says, I have given into thine hand Jericho. I've given it to you. It's yours. You have the ability. I've given you. And see, here's the interesting thing. I'm sure that Joshua was not aware that he had within him the ability to possess the land. Mm -hmm. He said, I've given it to you, but this is what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want it, you've got to go get it. Mm -hmm. If you want it, you got to go get it. You know, I was on my way to Atlanta a uh, weekend before last, I believe. And I began to ponder some things. I began, I began to ponder some things. I began to ponder some things. Are, are you with me? I be, began to ponder some things. And I began to think about um, um, why people are motivated to do certain things. Why would a person uh, be motivated to walk around Jericho once uh, every day and then on the seventh day, seven times 
Why would a person want to do that? Why does a person uh, get up every morning and uh, uh, get on the grind, as it were? And I begin to, as I begin to ponder uh, these things, Minister Designate Smith, I, I heard the scripture uh, resonate in my spirit where God says, where it says that my God, now you got to stay with me right here. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Now I could get up and walk around the room right there. How many of you are familiar with that scripture? It says, my God, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. <laughs> are you ready? Well, I begin to think about this thing. I begin to ponder. And I'm like, yes, God said he would supply all of my need. And, and then I started thinking, Ryan, about, about what I need. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm, I need my heart to beat in order to live. I need my heart to beat. So God has built in uh, a system uh, my uh, circulatory system, the ability for my heart to beat uh, uh, involuntarily. Is it, is it involuntarily? Voluntarily, I think it is. Voluntarily. And so while I'm asleep, I need my heart to beat. So, so God supplied a system, a mechanism, a process where my heart, well, even while I'm sleeping, it will beat for me. While I don't even have to think about it, it beats for me. And then I begin to think further. I said, mm, you know, you know, I need air to breathe. I need, somebody say, I need air. Mm -hmm, I heard you. I need air to breathe. And so God so designed it where the plants and the trees would give off oxygen. So I would inhale and have air to breathe. And, and so then when I exhaled, I exhaled, what is that? Uh, carbon monoxide, I think it is. And then the trees uh, breathe that in and clean it up, if you will, and uh, uh, exhale oxygen. And so it is that cycle uh, uh, is, 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 has been developing. God saw to it because I needed it. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Watch this. What, what else do I need? I what else did I need? I, I, I need, I need, I need, I need, um, I need my kidneys and, and my liver. I need my liver and my kidneys to uh, clean my blood. And so God, uh, fixed it, Ryan, where, uh, my body cleans my blood. Mm -hmm. It filters it. Mm -hmm. It filters, filters it for me. God said, I'll, 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 I'll give you what you need. Don't you just love it? Ah! God said, I'll give you what you need. Ain't, the, ain't God good? Mm, mm, ain't God good? Ooh, ain't God good? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is good all the time. Mm -hmm, I hear you. And all the time, God is good. He's good because he supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I, I begin to think about it. I said, you know, I, I need, I need food. I, I need food. Is there anybody uh, with me tonight, this afternoon, this evening, who might need some food? Well, God commanded the earth to uh, bring forth and to yield seed and herbs uh, good for eating. And he made it. Yes, he did. And he calls the cattle and on a thousand hills and, and the hogs and the pigs and the chickens. Yes. And, and the turkeys. Yes. He calls all of these things to be. Why? Because we needed to eat. And I remember reading or hearing, should I say, that, uh, uh, in those hills that God owns, if you dig uh, in those hills, you might find some sweet potatoes and some white potatoes and some red potatoes to go along with that meat. Amen. And oh, bless his name. And so God provided because he said that I'll give you what you need. But what we fail to realize is that God said, I'll give you what you need. Are you ready for this? But listen, honey, listen, if you want it, you got to go get it. <laughs> I'm going to give you what you need. But if you want it, you got to go get it. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, yes, I'm, 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 I'm going to cause the ground to produce apples and, and oranges. 
But if the, I'm going to give you what you need. Are you with me? But if you want it, you got to go pick it yourself. Oh, almost curse right there. Mm. Yeah, but if you want it, you got to go get it for yourself. Mm. And I began to think further. I, I began to think further. I said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I, I began to think about other things that we need. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Uh -huh. We need, I said, you know, I said, I, you know, we need clothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I heard a story that uh, caveman got tired of walking on uh, the ground and uh, the rocks and, and the gravel and uh, all those sharp objects and prayed to God one day and asked God for some shoes. Mm -hmm. Brilliant idea. And the Bible says, again, that God will provide all your needs according to uh, his riches and glory. And so uh, the story goes that the caveman asked God and prayed for some shoes. And lo and behold, there appeared a cow. <laughs> yes, God said you need shoes. I'm going to provide everything you need for shoes. But if you want some shoes, you're going to have to make them yourself. <laughs> Oh God, but God will give you exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. So in addition to him being able to take the skin of the cow and make shoes, but he's also able to make a leather jacket or a suede jacket. I can't hear nobody. Yes, he's able to make some shoes, maybe a pair of pants. Uh-huh. Yes, and he can make, even make him a nice suede bag, honey, and throw it over his shoulder, honey, and just sashay away. But in the interim, he's also able to take the meat and have food. Oh, you don't hear me tonight. You don't hear me tonight. Yes, God will give you what you need, but if you want it, you got to go get it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Now, listen at this. As I was on the plane, I, I continued thinking about um, other things that I need. And I said, you know, I need clothes. And I started thinking about clothing. And I said, oh, my God, yes, we need to be clothed. How many of you all need to be clothed? And I start thinking about it. You're going to love this. You're going to love it. Get ready for this one. Ah! I started thinking about it. I need some, I need some clothes. I need some clothes, Ryan. I need some clothes tonight. I need some clothes. I need some clothes. Yes, I need designer clothes. I need couture. I need some clothes tonight. Uh -huh. And I started thinking about it. Say, okay, God said he would supply our needs. Okay. And I thought about it. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, wow. See, God clothed us all one time. Think about it. While we were being shaped and formed, <laughs> Pastor Cheryl in Indianapolis, while we were being shaped and formed in our mother's womb, God was there and he saw that we were wonderfully and fearfully uh, made. And watch this. And God, God saw us. Yes, yes, he saw us. And guess what? He clothed us one time. He ain't going to do it again. You might say, Bishop, how did he clothe me? When did he put some clothes on me? Mm -hmm. are, are you ready for the answer? I don't, I don't think you're ready. I'm going to sip on this tea right quick. I don't, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready. Woo! Are you ready? <laughs> God clothed you one time and he's going to clothe you, clothe you one time only. Lynn, are you ready for this? This thing hurt me. When, I, when it hit my spirit, this thing hurt me to my core. But it made me see God in a whole new, different light. Uh -huh, Ryan said, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. God clothed you one time. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. When he put skin to cover your flesh, to cover your organs. When he put skin on you, that's when God clothed you. Yeah, when you were born, you had a suit of clothes. It's called your birthday suit. He, he, yes, he, he, he's, oh, I can't even talk right now. He, he clothed you from head to toe, honey. Head to toe, your birthday suit. And one thing about that suit, it will last a lifetime because when you die, to a degree, you're going to have that same suit on. But anyway, so I began to think about 
uh, clothes. And I said, and it dawned on me, if you want couture, if you want the latest designer clothes, if you, if you want the latest fashion, honey, God clothed you one time. But if you want anything outside of what you needed, you've got to go get it yourself. <laughs> God will give you what you need. Hear me tonight. But what you want, you got to go get it yourself. <laughs> God told, uh, the Lord told Jericho, it's in your hand. But if you want it, you've got to do something. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't want to do nothing. We think it's just going to come out of the sky. It doesn't work like that. You've got to do something. If you want it, you've got to get it for yourself. God will give you everything you need. But what you want, hmm, you've got to go get it yourself. But he has given you the ability and the power to go get it. Mm -hmm. What we've done in the past, we've allowed people to discourage us and uh, to limit um, us and to box us in, if you will, uh, to make us fear and doubt uh, or feel that we are not able uh, to get what we need. But God has given you the ability to get what you want. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to read it again. I, I, I just got to keep reading it. It says, I have given unto thine hand. I have given into thine hand, Jericho. I've given it to you. God is going to give you what you need, but you've got to use it to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want couture, you got to go get that yourself because God already clothed you. If you, if you, want, if you want some food, he, it's, it, it grows. Uh, it's plentiful, but you've got to go get it. You've got to get up. Offer your seat to do nothing. Take your happy self. Put yourself in your car. Go to the store and go get it. God is not going to have baskets sent sitting at your front door. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. So I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you tonight to know that in you, you have the ability, you have everything you need to accomplish what God has purposed for you to accomplish. He's given it to you. You are equipped, Cheryl. God bless you. You have everything you need, Cheryl. You have everything you need. The gift God has given you, it, it, you have it. And he will use it to bless others and yourself. Ryan, you have it in you. Lynn, you have it in you. Those of you on the conference call, it is in you. You have it. If you're on the conference call, I'm going to ask you to please, Muted. please. Mute your phone. Thank you so much. God, I hear you shouting. God bless you. God bless you. And God said unto Joshua. Hello. Please mute your phone. Thank you. Amen. Amen. People are just excited. And I'm excited too. Praise God. But everything that you need. You have it in you. You have it. Go get it. Stop waiting. While you're waiting on God, God is waiting on you. Hmm. I'm going to say it one more time. You're waiting on God. And God is waiting on you. Know that everything that you believe God for, he already has it set up. The universe is already in alignment to give you what you want, what you need, what you desire. The Bible says that I will give you the desires of your heart. But see, what we don't hear in that is that, number one, first and foremost, what you desire is what God is, what you desire is what God desires through you. In other words, you didn't come up with that desire on your own. God gives you the desire of your heart, and then he turns around and gives you the desire of your heart. Did you catch that? In other words, he gives you the desire, I want to be a millionaire. Now, you, that wasn't your idea. That was God's. And then he turns around and makes you a millionaire. He gives you the desires of your heart. 
The Bible says without God, you can't do anything. The thing that you desire, the thing that you long for, and I don't care what it is, it is the desire of God. It is what God wants to experience through you. And we fight ourselves. We, we fight ourselves. We throw ourselves uh, in the fire, into the fire because of the things we desire. I'm preaching real good. I'm preaching real good. When all along what you what you are desiring is what God wants to experience through you. I'm preaching real good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you desire. God said, I will give you the desires of your heart and turn around and give you the desire of your heart. Hmm. Hmm. Stop fighting yourself. Stop limiting yourself. Stop hating yourself. Stop accusing yourself. Stop limiting yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Be real about what you want. Be real about what you want. Be real about what excites you. Be real about what motivates you. It is God giving you the desire of your heart. We fight ourselves. Huh. Many people have taken their lives because they thought what they desired was bad and ugly and nasty and just shameful when it was just God wanting to express himself in a different way through you. It takes it to over 6 billion people on planet Earth right now. And it takes every bit of 6 billion people plus to express the multifaceted uh, personality, if you will, of God. He's, he's not one dimensional. He's past finding out. He's Paula, uh, Pamela, God bless you. He's, he's, he's past finding out. He, he's, 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 he's awesome. He's, his wisdom is insurmountable. He's, he's limitless. He, he's unchanging change. Uh, everything that can be and will be is who he is. And it takes all of us to express a facet of who God is. Hmm. Oh, my God. So what you feel is just a little bit of what God feels. <laughs> what you want is a little bit of what God wants. What you desire is a little bit of what God desires. God said, and for his pleasure. And for his pleasure. Mm. You don't get that. You don't get that. You don't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. And for his pleasure, we were created. Sandra, God, for his pleasure, mm -hmm, we were created. Renita, for his pleasure, we were, we were created for his pleasure. He, whoo, Jesus, it's not about us. It's about God expressing himself through us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You think what you like is what you like? Mm-mm. What you like is what God likes. And I'm going to take a sip of some tea. Because I need, need you to think about what, what I just said. Mm -hmm. You think what you like is what you like, but it's what God likes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for his pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And for his pleasure. Uh -huh. Ryan, and for his pleasure, you were created. Yeah, he find, he finds pleasure in you. I think I think what grieves God is when you don't, when you're not true to yourself. I, I think that's, that that aggravates God because then you limit what God can experience, if you will, to a degree. You understand what I'm saying? You you limit you you rob God of ah experiencing some wonderful, awesome things. You 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 cheat God from having a moment. <laughs> I'm preaching real good. I'm hurting myself tonight. And for his pleasure, we were created. Uh -huh. And for his pleasure, my God, take, take the chains off yourself. Uh, stop limiting yourself. Stop hating yourself. Start loving who you are. Embrace who you are. Love 
who you are. Get excited about being who you are. Ah, my God, my God, my God, my God. And when you do, when you, when you do, Ryan, you can just praise him anyhow. You can worship anywhere. You can magnify him because you can just bless his name. You can just have joy and peace unspeakable because you are expressing ah, the attributes of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> God help me tonight. I'm hurting myself. So stretch and believe. Trust your heart because it's God's heart. That beats in your chest. It's his desire. I just heard the spirit say, so let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. In this place. Have your way in this place. Free yourself. Free your mind. Free others. Ah, God, I give you praise. God told Joshua, I have given it unto you. But if you want it, you got to do something. Ah, if you want to be free, you got to do something. You, you've got to stop being bound. If you want to be free, you've got to stop being bound. Mm, you got to do something. Because God has already given you all that you need. To be all that you can be. He's done it for you. He's done it for you. And he's going to keep doing it for you. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what they think. God is able. So I'm going to encourage you tonight. I'm going to encourage you tonight. I'm going to encourage you tonight. It's in your hand. It's in your hand. It's in your hand. It is in your hand. Go get it. Pamela, go get it. Go get it. Yeah. Go get it. It's in your hand. He's opened the doors. He's Don't allow the wall, the barriers, uh, the hurdles to stop you. Don't allow what it looks like to stop you. Don't allow, oh, Minister Sandra, I forgot to bring my fan into the, oh, my God, I don't have my fan. But anyway, don't allow the wall to stop you. And what what's really interesting about this particular verse God told, the Lord told Joshua that I've given you the land before he gave him the land. With a wall in front of him. He said, in other words, don't worry about the land. Don't worry about the wall. If you do what I tell you to do, the wall will come down. <laughs> if you do what I tell you to do, the wall will come down. If you do what I tell you to do, the wall will come down. A lot of us allow the fact that there is a wall to keep us from doing what God tells us to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wall could be uh, a co-worker. That wall could be a boss. Uh, that wall could be a number of things. The wall could be uh, how you feel about yourself. The wall could be your lack of education or lack of expertise in a particular area. Those are walls, but walls can't come down. You can either climb over it, you can go around it, or you can go through it. But a wall is simply a wall. And it only has power over your life when you allow it to stop you, mm -hmm. you have everything that you need. Go get it. Go get it. 
I, I remember hearing the old saints, and I'm going to wrap it up, sing this song, Lord, don't move the mountain, but give me strength to climb it. Lord, don't take away my stumbling block, but lead me all around it. Hmm. Go get it. It's yours. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. But if it's something that you want, you've got to go get it. <laughs> he's clothed you once. If you want anything outside of what he's already given you, you've got to go get it. But he's given and made provision for you to have what you want. You need food. He's made provision for that. But if you want it, you got to go get it. Father, I thank you that we are motivated tonight, this morning, this afternoon, to go get what you have for us. To believe for it. To trust you for it. To walk and step out on faith. To not allow the, the walls obstacles or hurdles to keep us from obtaining what you have given unto us. God, give us the courage. I hear you, God, the courage to not allow the wall to deter us, to cause us to uh, freeze in our track, to paralyze us. But God, give us to know that you have given all things into our hands and all we have to do is follow your direction and to believe that we are more than able. And God, as we step out, as we move forward on your word, that the walls will come down, that the hurdles will fall flat, and that the way will be made. I thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. You know, as I was praying, I thought about the children of Israel uh, when they were, uh, they had uh, Exodus, uh, they had uh, left uh, Egypt and they came to a Red Sea. And God is so awesome. God is so powerful that he did not, he, he did not allow even the sea to prevent them from getting to the promised land. So I don't care what you're dealing with, whatever it is, you have the ability and the wherewithal to make it through beyond um, any obstacle, any challenge, any person, anything that might be standing in your way. In your way. So take courage tonight. Take courage tonight and stand on the promises of God. And as you do that, God will lead you and direct you. And all you need to do from that moment on is begin to praise him. As a matter of fact, you ought to prepay some praise and start thanking God for it right now, Ryan. Thank him for it right now. Thank him for it right now, Doris. Thank him for it right now. Yes, Minister Smith, thank him for it right now. Those of you on the conference call, Lynn, thank him for it right now. Praise him in advance. Prepaid praise. Oh, we bless your name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, I thank God for you, Ryan. So good to see you. Uh, Minister Smith, good to see you. Renita, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, how are you doing? I'm praying for you and your and your baby. Thank God for you. Lakita, God bless you. Pastor Cheryl Wallace, we haven't talked in a while. God bless you. Thank God for you. Uh, be safe out there on the road. I hope if you're in the Los Angeles area that you give me a call and let me know. Hopefully we can, we can hook up and have lunch or something. Uh, thank God for you guys. Listen, keep me in your prayers. Um, just keep me in your prayers. Just during your pray, prayer time, um, keep me in your prayers. Uh, God bless you. Yes. Pre-paying for it. Yes. Believe God for it now. Love you too, Ryan. God bless you. If you're ever in Los Angeles, you got to look me up. 
Uh, it would be an honor and a pleasure to meet you. Uh, if nothing, nothing else, to those of you who are on the conference call, Lynn and the rest of you, God bless you. Thank God for you. Again, if you're in the Los Angeles area, meet me this Sunday. Join me this Sunday. We're going to praise God like we have lost our mind. Amen. We're going to send up some powerful praise and worship. Amen. Got a powerful word for you tonight. Uh, for uh, Not tonight, but on uh, Sunday afternoon. So join me 3 o'clock at the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center, 4305 Degden Avenue in the city of Los Angeles. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for you. Um, God is good. God is faithful. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. No matter what's going on, he'll make it all right. But you got to stay strong. Y'all be encouraged. God loves you. I love you. God bless you. Minister Sandra, God bless you. Thank God for you. Amen. Have an awesome night, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is. Be blessed. God bless you.